Now, welcome back to the third video in this series. We're going to do what I call the mini mall. We're going to be discussing a few of the aspects of dealing with the mole. We use the symbol N for mole in mathematical equations, but then we're going to wait until the next unit on stoichiometry to really delve into it in detail. So we're going to start with calculating molar mass. And when I talk about calculating molar mass, I mean from the formula for molar mass and also the variety of concentration units that we're going to be encountering throughout the year. Now the formula approach to molar mass, next unit we'll use it as a conversion factor. Right now we're focusing on the formula use. You're used to seeing it in this form because that's the definition that molar mass is the mass per mole of a substance, but the more helpful, the form that will help you most is this form, and that's actually the one that AP gives you. And strongly recommend that you memorize that, because it's going to be very handy to flip that in and out other formulas. And that's that moles are equal to mass over molar mass. Now, when we do this, yes, I could get the molar mass from the formula of ammonia. I could look at nitrogen as 4.01 and then 3 times 1.01 and add them all up. But what I'm after here is for you to use the given data to get the final answer. So in the first case, we'd have moles are equal to mass over molar mass. And so our moles then are going to equal 3.289 grams divided by 17.04 grams per mole. And if we do this, you should get the number 0 0.1930. I took that to four significant figures because both of my givens were in four significant figures. Now, in the case of barium chloride, I'm also given enough information to calculate the molar mass. So I'm going to plug that into my formula. Molar mass is my mass over my moles. So let me fix my mistake there. We've got molar mass is equal to mass, which is 53.998, divided by my moles, 2.2593. And this would what you, is what you would see from an experiment. So really what they're saying is you have 53.998 grams per mole, and we want to know how many grams we would get if we had one mole. That's what the molar mass is. And if you did that mathematics, you should get 208.25. I've already got the units up at the top, so I'm not going to write them down there. And again, you could also get this from the chemical formula, barium's plus 2, chloride's minus 1, so that's BaCl2. Now, in this next one, you really do have to write the formula first, because I only have one of the values in my formula here. And so I need my formula, and it's a good time to remind you, the Roman numeral 2 says that it's copper with a 2 plus charge. Copper's 2 plus sulfates minus 2. A hydrate means the crystal has tightly bonded waters. And in this case, it's 5H2O. And if you added all those up from the periodic table, we'd have 249.69 grams per mole. Now we can plug into the formula and actually solve for our mass. So 249.69 is going to equal our unknown grams per 3.67 times 10 to the minus 2. And I'm going to go ahead and let you pull out the mathematics for that. You should be able to handle that algebra. And for the next one as well, you're going to have to do the mathematics for this as well. But I want to give you a, a hint. This is covalent. It's always helpful when you're writing formulas to identify them as covalent or ionic. This one's covalent. Di, phosphorus, 2-phosphorus, pentoxide, 5 oxygen. So we changed the last one to oxide. Use the periodic table to get the molar mass. And once you've done that, plug that into the formula 
to calculate the number of moles. And I expect you to have that completed when you get to class, then uh, when this particular video is due. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right now so that we can change topics and move on to our solutions and calculating the molarity of a solution.